For pudding, we're going to go for some yogurt panna cotta with roasted rhubarb and ginger. And panna cotta, you might be thinking, oh no, it's really full of fat. And most of the time it is because essentially it's uh, pure double cream. But we're using yogurt, which is naturally way lower in fat. And also, the majority of it is made up simply with some milk. And I am enriching it with a tiny bit of double cream, but you know what? You can already tell with taking the double cream out as a majority, we've probably at least half the fat content. Now, the basis of this is to make an infusion um, with the milk and the cream. So I've got a pan here. I'm just going to pour my milk in, into the pan. And then, as I said, just enrich that with the double cream. And then obviously it's pudding, it needs a bit of sweetness, but I'm using sweetness in the form of an unrefined golden caster sugar. And uh, what a lot of people don't realise is that sugar is probably one of the worst things for the body. But if you're using sugars, use unrefined ones because your body processes them so much better. So I've got an orange here and I'm just going to um, zest this into uh, this milk mixture. So before I carry on any further, we have got our leaf gelatin here, which is just like this. A lot of people get a bit nervous about cooking with gelatin, and it's actually one of the easiest things you can do. Get these leaves, put it in some water, and we're just gonna let that soak for about sort of four to five minutes, and when that's done, you just literally stir it into a hot liquid. That's it. Then our final aromatic is vanilla, one of my favorite ingredients. And then you never waste anything. You just pop those vanilla pods in there as well because that's going to infuse. And uh, we'll just leave that just to come up to the boil. I'm just going to give that a stir and if you get your face close to it, it smells fantastic. Now, the milk is completely infused and you can actually leave this for about 10 minutes to really suck up and absorb all, that, all of that flavour and it will just be extra delicious. But what we're going to do now is actually just stir in our gelatin, which you can see now has just gone into complete sort of jelly goo. So that's ready now and I'm just going to grab a whisk and I'm going to whisk this into my yoghurt, simple as that. Just very, very slowly. So that is really smooth and lump free, but because I've got all these aromatics in there and actually while we've got the zest in there, the zest has done its job now and I want to strain out the big bits because it's only just going to be, it would just be a bit weird on the palate actually. And then that's it, you just simply pour this into some tin bowls or some ramekins or whatever you like. Do you know what? I've seen people do them in really big pudding bowls and everyone can tuck in to the whole thing, which I think is a really nice way of doing it as well. So that's pretty much it. All you need to do now is just uh, cover them in cling film and then pop them in the fridge for about five hours. To go alongside our panna cottas, as I said, we've got some rhubarb, well, roasted rhubarb and ginger. Now, rhubarb actually has to be one of the best things you can have for your liver. It actually goes to far, so far as to regenerate your liver. So really, really, really fantastic. And um, when it's in season, it's one of the, another one of the best British ingredients you can use. Almost the more higgledy-piggledy, the better, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to cover this in a little bit more caster sugar. We're only using a tiny bit. And finally, some ginger syrup. So we're not going to get a big ginger explosion. We're just going to get a tiny, tiny hint of it. Toss everything in there. Make sure everything's really nicely coated. And simply put that into a hot oven, about 190 to 200 degrees for about 12 minutes. All right, so the rhubarb's about done. Just going to whip it out. What we need to do is we're going to let that cool and as that cools, the syrup that you can see is surrounding it is just be going to become really nice and thick and syrupy. <laughs> so the panna cottas are ready and I mean you can tell they're set, they're sort of completely firm. What you're looking for is to ha for them to have sort of some, some give there, you don't want them to be like bouncy balls. So the way that you loosen the edges of the panna cotta, I've got some freshly boiled water here and I'm going to plunge it into that just for a few seconds, it doesn't need that long. I'm going to pop that on here, giving it a bit of a shake and then lifting the lid on it, which is perfect. And then I'm just going to pile up the rhubarb any which way you like, just next to it. 
this sauce that you get alongside it, you can just spoon that over the rest of the rhubarb. So there we have it. This is my yogurt panna cotta with roasted rhubarb and ginger. Mm -hmm.